everybody. Thank you for joining our podcast, Moms on the Move. I'm Jen Wells. And I'm Jennifer Sis. We have Victoria Yates with us today. She is the cutest girl ever. I don't like to hug, but I just gave her the biggest <laughs> hug when we met. She's so I cute. Help it. I can't help it. She's adorable. So you are a certified eating, okay, certified intuitive eating coach. Yes. Wow. Okay. That's mm-hmm. awesome. And you're a prior nurse. Yes. So you have this whole like background. Yep. So let's just deep dive into yeah, this. Let's do this. I'm ready. I mean, I feel it. like, yeah, like mm-hmm. it's funny. I was saying like right when we met, I normally sit down and like kind of prep the night before and just have, you know, questions and whatever, just things that I'll want to talk about. But I, I didn't even have to. I was like, I think that this is going to hit so many people and be mm-hmm. like this very easy conversation because it's mm-hmm. so relatable. Just mm-hmm. women and their relationship with food and body image. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just this like mm-hmm. every single day something you think about. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. what made you get into this? Yeah. So really it was my own struggles with my relationship with food mm-hmm. and my body. So for a big portion of my life, I struggled with um what I would like hindsight, I had an eating disorder, mm-hmm. but um I really just struggled with this like obsession with healthy eating. Mm-hmm. Um and as we were talking about a moment ago, it kind of snuck in, in the back door. I just said, you know, I I was in high school and I was just like, I just wanna be I just want to be healthy. Like yeah. so many women want to. Like we just want to feel good. We want to feel right. healthy. You have all the good intentions. Um, totally. Yes. Mm-hmm. And so um, I kind of have that personality of, like, if I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it to perfection Mm -hmm. and, like, to the extreme and just Mm -hmm. be the best. And so that's what I did. I was, like, the best at healthy eating, the best at, like, exercise and just all of the things. Um, And it ended up turning to an unhealthy, um, really an unhealthy place. So, yeah. So how did you recognize that you were in an unhealthy place? I think it was a lot of different things over the course of years, you know, friends making comments, my parents recognizing things Mm -hmm. um, about how I was eating. And and yet other people, what made this kind of difficult was other people were praising me about it. Mm -hmm. Other people were like, wow, like you're so diligent, you're so determined, you're so motivated. And that felt so good. So it kind of pushed me even farther um, towards, you know, just continuing in this way. Um, and then really for me personally, it wasn't until I met my husband who is, um, more of a normal eater, um, that I realized that I had a problem and I, I kind of had this realization of, um, all right, the way that I approach food and exercise was so consuming. And I had this realization that for us to have a really healthy relationship and eventually, you know, have a really healthy marriage, mm-hmm. I kind of had to make some changes in, in how I was approaching food. And so that was kind of the start. Mm-hmm. And then from there, um, I, I actually, a big like light bulb went off when I learned about intuitive eating and with my background as a nurse, it just made so much sense because, um, the way, as we'll maybe talk about, the way that diets work is they literally work against our bodies, um, bio- biologically speaking, which is why it's so hard to maintain oh them, my gosh, which I is why we yeah. all feel like we're failing. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we'll, we'll kind of feel good about it for a little while. We'll be able to keep up what we're doing for a little while, but mm-hmm. then your body is so smart and that drive is so strong that eventually you'll fall off of it. And um I like to say, you know, it's not you that's failing. It's literally like it's working against your body. So what I help people do now, um, because I, I kind of realized that we really can trust our bodies. Our our bodies are really smart, and when we work together with them instead of constantly try to fight them, um, we can actually live really healthy lives and feel really good without the obsessive calorie counting or Mm -hmm. like forcing yourself to go to the gym every day. And that that kind of behavior, and it feels so much healthier. You know, when you say intuitive eating, I learned about intuitive around forty two when I recovered from an eating disorder myself. Um, that was so foreign to me, and I want mm-hmm. you to dive into that a little more, more because one of the things I had to do was like you look at a menu, mm-hmm. and you don't look at what's the least amount of calories or what you think you should eat. You want to eat what you want, and. Mm-hmm. That was so foreign to me because I had been on an eternal diet for 30 years. So mm-hmm. that, it, it, and it's still a little bit 
foreign to me. It's not mm-hmm. a perfect science for me to 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 do what I want to do. So talk about intuitive yeah, eating. Tell, a lot yeah, of people don't explain understand what that. that is. Yeah. So intuitive eating is really just a framework that helps you to get away from dieting and dieting behaviors and really just eat normally. And by normally, listening to your body. So our body is really, like I said, really smart. It gives us cues kind of like, you know, we would never question if I'm thirsty, I'm going to drink some water, Mm -hmm. right? Your body gives you a very physical cue that says I'm thirsty. Right. Um, Same thing goes with food. So a lot of times because of dieting and just that years and years of dieting, where we aren't used to listening to our hunger cues, our fullness cues, cues of satisfaction, we those cues are muted because we're just not used to paying attention to them. And so what intuitive eating, the work that I do is really about is helping people to reconnect with their bodies, um, re bring about those cues again so that they can pay attention to those. And that's how you can get away from the calorie counting um, is by really just almost being a student of your body. And in the same way as like, okay, I'm thirsty. I'm going to drink some water. Being at a place where you trust yourself enough to be able to pay attention to those cues to guide eating as well. The other day I had a crumble cookie, which, oh, yes. Okay, <laughs> so good. Yeah. I, went, in. I went to stop by my so office good. and there was a guy there and he had like the whole thing and he gave me like this much and I was like, excuse me, can I have more? <laughs> And he's like, okay. So, so he gave me more, and I was, like, driving home. I hadn't eaten, okay? So that was, like, what I was eating. I was starving. Mm-hmm. So I took, like, the first bite and literally wanted to, like, pass out. It was that good. But then I realized I just kept, like, shoving them in my mouth to the point, like, 10 minutes later, I was like, ugh. Like, mm-hmm. why can't I stop myself from and, – and I'm not saying I have a problem. I think that's, like, super normal. Mm-hmm. Like – you know, you you don't know when enough is enough like kids do. You know, like apparently when you're, I think it's like until you're three years old, you only eat until you're full. Something like, there's something like that. I don't remember what age it is. Mm-hmm. When then you start eating for other reasons. There's the emotional aspect. The clean all, plate club, the whole, the whole CPA thing. CPA award. But you were hungry. That was the big one. And Victoria will <laughs> help you with that. You were I hungry when you ate that cookie. I was very hungry. And then all of a sudden I was disgusted. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like, ew. And I felt bad for like, you know, like two hours after that because I just ravenously ate an Oreo, a peanut butter. I mean, it was just like, <laughs> but it was delicious. Mm-hmm. But there's that fine line. Mm-hmm. So what are cues that you're talking about. Because I, I yeah. understand the water thing. Like, you drink when you're thirsty, and then... You trust yourself with water and, and, I know, so and what a beverage, the, what? but not food. Like, it's because water doesn't taste And do we good. put labels on food, like the good and bad thing? I heard that, yeah. too. We do that. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and, and so there's so many factors that influence us being able to eat intuitively. So there's that... And, and it's all the way that we're thinking about food. Right. So it's the labels, the, okay, this food is good, this food is bad. If I eat the bad food, I feel guilty. Mm-hmm. And that can lead to a whole, like, psychological response where you feel guilty. So maybe you, you know, your next thing is, for a lot of people, it's, all right, well, I've already eaten one cookie, so That's I might as say. well just eat them all, right? So you're yes. like, all right, I've already failed, so I might as well just go Fail all out, the day. and tomorrow I'll be better. So mm-hmm. we see this behavior so often, um, and that's what's, you know, if, for your example, like, if you were able to say, like, okay, I'm, like, really starving right now. I have one cookie, and um, noticing that, wow, I'm actually more, like, starving for or hungry for a meal, mm-hmm. maybe you could recognize, like, hey, in this kind of situation, maybe I, like, just try to plan for a meal. Or, like, one thing that I see a lot of times is you overeat on cookies or you eat more than you want, right? And the response is then to shame yourself, feel guilty, and that can lead to a whole other slew of um, reactions versus, all right, I overate, feeling neutral about it, not judging yourself. And I always love to... um, approach things like that with curiosity. Like, okay, let me just get curious about this because it's very Mm non-judgmental and it keeps you from taking that negative second response. 
after eating more than you want, right? Mm -hmm. And then skipping a meal, because that's Mm -hmm. what people do too. They would say, well, I'm not going to eat because I ate this. I can't have this. I wouldn't do that. I would be like, I failed. So now, mm-hmm. yeah. So people over, have right? totally different Done. responses. Right. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And like my diet's always starting tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And do you think like, uh, and and I, I say to you because this is what I did. I ate all the cookies because I then thought I'm not going to have them for a while. Yeah. So you kind of play a game. It's all mind. It's all mental. And so I would say, well, I, I got to get in and now because I'm not allowed. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, that's what the diet tells you. Yeah. Well, that's the and thing. It's the mentality like, we carry. We are just so consumed by the diet stuff. Mm-hmm. Like we are consumed with the track your calories, track your macros. That's the new track thing. Track your steps. Track, track your, your steps. Um, get on the scale. Don't get on the scale. Mm-hmm. Like there's so much in your face. And then I know that we, when you came in, I was saying like, I know I'll probably get some backlash on this, but I really have a problem with the people <laughs> And I know you're just, you're out there making money. I get it. And I love a good hustle, but that are pushing diets mm-hmm. on you that are, don't have the background to push a diet on you because they're out there and they're that like pyramid scheme. And they're like, oh, look, look at my body. This is before. And this is like after. And, you know, like I suggest you do this plan and, you know. Pop this pill. Pop this pill. Take this shake. Um, and it, it, it's so like. I think it's offensive to push that kind of diet onto women. I think if you want to ask for help, you go to someone like you. You know what I mean? Like you mm-hmm. ask for it. You don't need to. Mm-hmm. I, I just think it's a very unhealthy thing that is out there right now. And um, it's not benefiting mm-hmm. anyone. I I really don't like it. Yeah. One of the biggest problems I see in just the health and wellness industry is we're so quick, even, I hate to say, but like even medical professionals, even Mm -hmm. doctors are very quick to say, and I worked with doctors, like I was a nurse for six years before really transitioning into this role. So doctors are really quick and people are really quick to say, go on a diet, Just, just go do this and this and like eat better, lose weight. And everything will be better. Mm -hmm. And what we're missing is it's almost like, I kind of describe this as, it's like you have an infection all throughout your body and you just take Tylenol for the headache that you have. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, like what you really need is the antibiotic to cure everything. So what I, what my approach is, is the problem is not with the food. It's not with the exercise. Most people probably listening know how to eat healthy. They know Mm -hmm. what that looks like. Yep. And the problem is in your relationship with food and your relationship with your body. And so that's the approach that I take is let's actually get to the root of the problem, work on that stuff. And then from there, you'll be able to work on some of those other like healthy habits and they're going to actually stick for the long haul. So as a coach, who do you typically see coming to you? Honestly, it's it's such a variety because as we've talked about, it's like, so many women, like every woman can relate, I have found, with struggling with this to some extent. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, I have seen, I've worked with college students. I've worked with people up until, their, you know, up to their 60s who, like, just now are realizing that after years and years of dieting, mm-hmm. they're like, all right, I realize this hasn't worked for me and I'm, I want to be done. Yeah. Um, and honestly, women all in between. What do you, like, what do you find is, like, a very common underground root cause with the Mm yo-yo dieting stuff. Yeah. Is it compare? I mean, there's so much comparison. Mm -hmm. You know, you compare yourself to what, like, this. my biggest issue I have is I compare myself to what I used to be Mm -hmm. before my three kids. Like, I I used to be 15, 20 pounds lighter without even trying my whole life. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly with every kid, it just got harder and harder. And then to lose like three pounds now, I feel like I have to go on this like incredible diet where I'm tracking my calories and I get like obsessive Mm. and then I get down about it. And then I'm like, it's not even worth it. Like that, that Mm -hmm. sucks. Like I'm all like stressed out about it. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, is it, do you find that there's a comparison issue? Like just like a sense of, I don't know, just negative self-talk. Yeah. So I would say at the base, like I mentioned earlier, it's not about the food, really what it boils down to that's kind of across the board with every woman I've worked with is um, the belief that I'm not enough right now as I am. Like, 
it, it even more than body, but just like as a whole, like I'm mm-hmm. not enough. Um, believing that or there's often a cause of I feel like I'm out of control, especially when you talk about like body change. Mm-hmm. Body change is so normal, and yet kind of our culture has made it feel like it's abnormal and wrong. And so when bodies change, we feel out of control. We feel like something's gone wrong, and so then we tighten our grasp even more. And that resistance to body change can lead to a lot of those consequences that, you know, you're talking about. So, And of um, course you're going to have—and then, and that's the thing. It's like, of course you should expect your body to change. But, I mean, it's it's like— I feel like so many people know this. Mm-hmm. Like, I just had three kids in a very short amount of time. Why should I even remotely expect not to look different? You know, yeah. like and it's I, just, and I've gone through menopause, I, and and, mm-hmm. I, and I know I keep saying me, but I feel like it's mm-hmm. so relatable. Like, mm-hmm. I think there's so many women that I talk to, and like so many of my friends who feel the same way. It's like you look at old pictures of yourself, and oh my gosh, what do I need to do to get back there? Yeah, and it's yeah. always very extreme. Yep. Yeah, we're always comparing ourselves to a past self unless we come to the place where we, okay, recognize that body change is normal and work on that relationship that we have with ourselves. And also, I think recognizing that, um, I was actually coaching someone last night on this, that body change is uncomfortable, just like any change we go through. Like moving to a new city, starting a new job, it's uncomfortable. That's just the reality of change. Mm -hmm. And so instead of, like, if we can just recognize that, all right, my body feels foreign right now, and that's okay. That's not a problem. You can still work. I love to imagine almost like my body and I are on the same team. We're working together. We're friends versus us mm-hmm. trying to just, like, fight each other all the time because that's just not productive and not helpful. To recognize resistance is a big deal. And I, mm-hmm. I watched your workshop last night, which was amazing, by the way. It was very good. Thank you. Um and I learned a lot previously from what you were saying, but you still said it differently, and I still mm-hmm. learned something new. But whenever you make the change, like you said, your mind only knows what was, so it's going to go back to what was comfortable. It's going to go back to what felt better, what it knew. Mm-hmm. So when you start to push against something completely different or unknown, then you're, you're in other words, be ready for your mind to go, hey, I don't want to do this. Yes. You yes. know, that's why we fall off in two weeks, three weeks, you know, because the mind is going to go, hey, I liked where we were. I knew that better than this. This mm-hmm. makes me feel uncomfortable. And you made that point last night. And I love the part about um, the curiosity part because that slows you down. Like, mm-hmm. to, it's mental. Everything's mental. So when you said, listen, let's talk about this. Why am I feeling this way? What? I loved it. It was a great job. It was yeah. really, really good. So what do you go over in your workshops? Mm-hmm. Like, what, so what, what were you saying with the curiosity thing? Yeah, so one of the things that I'd say, like, the best— mindset that you can practice is really just curiosity. Mm -hmm. I mean, so many things you could practice, but if you take up like one thing, just practice getting curious with yourself. And I almost like to think of, and this is really what working with a coach can help you do is it's like having someone outside of your brain and your brain is having all of that resistance or, you know, it's like our brain has this default way of thinking, way of responding. And Sometimes it's not actually helpful for what we want to do, where we want to go. So maybe your default way of thinking about your body is really negative. Your default way of thinking is about food is I have to control everything. So to have someone on the outside say, or even you can practice this with yourself, just questioning and getting curious about like, why am I thinking this? Mm -hmm. And is this really true? Is this really supporting me? Is this really serving me? Um, And instead of Oftentimes what we go to is that judgment of like, my body's changed, and then you start judging yourself. Or I overate, and you start judging yourself versus how can we just get curious about that? And Mm -hmm. we can learn from ourselves with that kind of mindset, with curiosity versus judgment is just going to keep you stuck. I think a lot of times, too, people associate like a certain weight with happiness. Mm -hmm. That's what we've been taught. We've been yeah, I mean, I was I was like mm-hmm. looking up some stuff, and it said a quarter of the icons we look up to have actual like anorexia, but like women today weigh more than they used to. So when you kind of talk through that, you're like, okay, well, with social media and like comparing yourself to these these women, we're naturally gonna stir up more negative 
thoughts about ourselves and then continue that cycle. Mm -hmm. And that's why there's that two and a half billion dollar diet industry, because then you think that's going to be what helps you achieve that happiness. But um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's just, I think it's like one of those, and I, and I know I say especially women, but especially women, because we're the ones a lot of times going through those cycles of the body change. Mm -hmm. This is what we're taught. And she touched on it earlier. And this is also what I've talked about in my speaking is that you're not enough. You don't feel like you're enough somewhere, somehow. That's what happened to me at 11 years old. I felt like I just wasn't enough because I was being compared innocently to somebody else that had mm -hmm. on the same outfit that I did. I didn't look the same. I wasn't the same age. I wasn't the same height. I wasn't the same anything. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and, and it just puts, plants a seed in my mind. Wait a minute. This is not as good as that. And then you start to play on it and you start to seek um, support for that belief in your environment. And you don't hear the good things. You hear the other things. And then you start to be your own worst enemy. And it, like you said, it comes in the back door and just, you know, takes over. So, um, yeah. Talk about like not feeling good enough because we start that really early when we start comparing ourselves to others. Before there was social media, when I was around, mm -hmm. it was just magazines or other girls. I had the boobs and I had the, the hips. The other girls around me didn't have any of that. You know, I had But now you're expected to have both. <laughs> it's so all, well, that's the thing. It's always it's changing. changing. It's yeah. always so you're changing. never going to be enough right. if you are always comparing yourself to it's true. what. Right, and you the don't even mean to. Says. You don't. Yeah. You know. You don't know that you're doing it. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's just hard. Yeah. So I like to think of comparison. So it's kind of like in our human nature to compare. It's like that. That is like primally like we're built to be together, mm -hmm. to be as a herd. You know. So. What I like to think about with comparison, though, is when you are looking at someone else and you notice a comparing type of thought, like, I wish I, I don't know, had was like this person. What I like to do is actually think about comparison is really just you seeing something in someone else that you really are attracted to. Mm -hmm. And you, like, if you, aside from, like, the physical aspects Oftentimes, there's something a little deeper down, too. Like, maybe you see someone, and on the outside, you're like, wow, they're really pretty or whatnot. And maybe you see more so that they're really confident, and you mm -hmm. are drawn to that. And when I think about comparison, it's as, okay, this is just something I'm drawn to in someone else. I like to, again, get curious about, like, what is that that I'm really drawn to? And how can I have that for myself? So if I see someone, and I'm like, I find myself comparing to them, and I notice it's more than just their appearance. It's that they're walking with confidence. They're really, um, you know, sure about what they're talking mm -hmm. about. And I'm drawn to that. How can I have that for myself? Is that something that I can take on as for myself too? And so then instead of like the comparison being really negative and non-productive, you actually use it for your own benefit to bring you up as well. Um, so I like to think about comparison in that way is it's just something that you see someone, you see someone else has mm -hmm. something that you're really attracted to and drawn to. And instead of making it mean that you're less because of right, that, right, right. how can you actually use that for yourself? Mm -hmm. So what are other, okay. So in regards to like the mindful eating, mm -hmm. what are some tips that you've implemented or you tell your clients to implement? Yeah. I think one of the biggest things that we can do is actually plan for hunger. And as, mm -hmm. as silly as that sounds, no, it's, it's so it's we go basic. through our day it a lot. It's, it sounds so basic. And yet so many of, you know, I see this so often is like we're prioritizing our kids being fed or our spouses being fed and we're not really prioritizing ourselves as much. So prioritizing feeding yourself can really go so far because um, when we are not doing that, we're not planning for hunger, we can end, or end up going through our day and getting to the end of the day and feeling so ravenous because we and haven't eat, actually fed. Crumble cookies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and overeating or mm -hmm. just not eating in the way that we want to really, because again, it's like your body is just like, give me all the food right now because I'm starving. So if we can kind of plan ahead of time for being hungry and we can, um, kind of know in our head, like, know some of those first cues of what does hunger feel like for me instead of waiting until like noticing maybe when it's just that emptiness in your stomach or one of the biggest things for me that I know I'm getting hungry is I start thinking about food a lot. Mm -hmm. So if I know that about myself 
and I eat in those early signs of hunger versus waiting until I'm ravenous and like hangry, then Mm -hmm. I'm going to feel so much better. And I'm going to be able to actually sit down and eat something more mindfully versus just like shoveling food in and not really being able to take that mindful So are you moment. like really all about like your body cues? Yes, like if you're yes. hungry, if you're hungrier one day than the next, which is super common, mm-hmm. um, are you like, I'm going to eat a sandwich at 10? Yeah. Well, I eat lunch very early. Like <laughs> I have little kids and so we're eating lunch at like 11. <laughs> yeah. <and> I do <laughs> too. <laughs> I do too. Maybe because not I'm- 10. Maybe 10 I'll eat like a little bit more of a snack. Mm-hmm. But I mean, sometimes I get to 11 and I'm like, I am starving right now. So I eat. Well, because eat then you hear about lunch. the whole like intermittent fasting mm-hmm. thing and it's just, there's so many things you there's are so like rules bombarded that, with. It's yeah. like, don't eat till two. And then when you do eat, not past only, seven. only eat yeah. meat. And then <laughs> don't eat before you exercise. Eat before you exercise. I had a question too, and this in this is like a, a, a personal one for moms because we have a lot of those that mm-hmm. tune in. When you were talking about um, you, your mother noticed or whoever noticed mm-hmm. when you were when when this was going on, how do mamas recognize this in their daughters or their sons? Oh wow, great question. And what do they do? They don't always know what to do. And I even have clients to come to me that don't always know what to do. Do we go directly to someone like you? Do we look up that that kind of professional? Or is there something a mama or daddy could say to, to help that child that comes home and says, you know, I wish I looked like so-and-so. I, I want to go on a diet or I need to be thinner or yeah. what, whatever it is that, that, that they bring home. Mom and dads don't know how to handle it sometimes. I, I, it yeah, wasn't handled true. for me. So, yeah. Yeah, I would say, you know, one of the best things in that kind of situation is just how can you have just an open relationship and conversation with your kid? And they might not be able to, you, they might not be ready for that. Like I know when my mom first presented it, that I had a problem. I was very resistant. Um, but just, I still think looking back that those conversations made a difference, even when it doesn't feel like you're making progress. Um, And then you can always, like, I'm a big proponent, like, take it to your doctor because, like, they're going to be able to know the physical signs of when it's gone too far and it's become something that's affecting physical health. Mm -hmm. You know, that's really important. But just start to have that conversation with your son or daughter just openly and honestly. Like, hey, I, you know, I noticed this, this kind of behavior in you. Like, you know, you don't have to worry about that, those kinds of things. But even more than that, I would say the biggest thing that moms can do, because we don't, as moms, we don't have control over our kids as much as we think we do. One of the best things that we can do is actually have a good relationship with our bodies ourselves and with food ourselves. And be the example. Because so many of of my clients, Mm -hmm. like I would actually say every single one Mm -hmm. of my clients shares a story about how they noticed this behavior in their own moms. And it wasn't necessarily that their moms were saying anything about them. Oftentimes it's not. Like their mom wasn't saying negative things about their bodies or how they were eating. It was they mirrored how their mom was with food and how their mom talked about their body. So one of the best things that moms can do Mm -hmm. is do this work themselves. And that is going to – like kids are so – they pick up on so much. Like I'm noticing that with my two-year-old, I'm like, man, he is learning so much and I'm not teaching him anything. And I'm like, (laughs) kind of scares me because Bo's such a maniac. I'm not, I'm going to blame my husband. It's his fault. Yeah, all the negative things, just put it on the spouse. (laughs) My sweet mother was always on a diet. Mm -hmm. And I guess I saw that. Yeah. Um, And you become afraid or you you look at yourself. But, Mm -hmm. you know, and yeah. So that makes a lot of sense because she's, she was on one after the other. And, you know, and the thing is, when I look back, she didn't need to be. Mm-hmm. She didn't need to be. So yeah. wherever she adopted the thought process and the mental breakdown for her with food happened, you know, it's just mm-hmm. cycle. Mm-hmm. It is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I love, like, one of my favorite, favorite thoughts is thinking about the impact that doing this work on your relationship with food, your body image can have on not even your just your own life, but generations to mm-hmm. come. It's really impactful. Well, and I've heard like um, a lot of times instead of like saying, you know, you look really skinny or thin, mm-hmm. you're supposed to say, I mean, although if someone said that to me, I'd be like, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you look lean or you look, 
<laughs> there's a, you know, you look healthy, you look strong, mm -hmm. you know, and, and talk about more like the health aspect versus like the mm -hmm. physical appearance of it, mm -hmm. um, especially with kids. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just kind yeah. of, you know, instead of saying like, you look skinny, it's you look healthy, you look strong. Yeah muscular mm -hmm. or even like what aspects of their personality do you like like mm -hmm. even going deeper and bringing out that praising them for just who they are the things that they're doing are you're you know oh look at you you helped your neighbor you you're so thoughtful you're so thoughtful you mm -hmm. waved at your right. your friend there you know so, yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so you do one-on-one -on -one coaching and you also do like group sessions i just do one-on-one -on -one, actually you just do one -on -one. yep okay yep. So what was last night? That was you a workshop. I just workshop. Yep, I do. Okay, got it. I've been doing some occasional workshops. Like got one, it. I'm, my goal is once a quarter right now. So okay. we'll see. Yeah, yeah. It was really good. So where can everyone mm -hmm. find you? Yeah. So people can connect with me over on social media on Instagram. I'm over there a lot. Um, I'm at non diet underscore rn, and my website is victoria yatescom and then I have a podcast also that you can come listen to. <laughs> yeah. Big fan of podcasts. So it's the Redefining Health podcast, and we're on pretty much every single platform. Thank you so much. Yeah. I, I know. I feel like, you know, we – even just to hear how common this is and, you know, it's not it's not just you that has this, like, issue with food and body image. It's just – it's so common. It's just so common. And I loved the whole, like, body change discussion it's so, so needed too yeah and I, I i don't find that there's many of you out there no there's not so this is so needed and so necessary and we're so lucky to have you today thank you yeah, yeah. and if anyone's interested in learning more about working together i actually offer a free consult um which people can mm -hmm. book at um i don't know if you guys do links or whatnot but um, the link is bit.ly forward slash call Victoria Yates. So I made it super simple. Uh, yeah, yeah, you put yeah, it on there. Perfect. Can't I'll, we? I'll, yeah. I'll okay. 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 Yeah. Perfect. Thank you so much yeah. again for thank coming. You. Um, and we want to thank our sponsors real quick. We want to thank Lisa Johnson with Fair Fairway Mortgage, Nest Realty, Blackacre Law, Parm Smith Archenhold, Body Works, Browning Studio, and Southern Girl Chic for dressing us. So thank you all so much. And we look forward to seeing you next time. <laughs>